Good morning, everyone. It's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and my craft table. Today, this is going to be a uh, kind of an offshoot from my Cricut Summer Series. Father's Day is coming up here in a couple of days, and I decided that I wanted to make a mug for my dad for Father's Day. Actually, I have a couple things for him, but um, I'm going to try something that I haven't done before. I, I have used the Cricut Infusible Ink transfer sheets several times to make many successful mugs, and I really love this product. And I have the 15 ounce mugs here, and um, you can, these are a two count of 15 ounce mugs. You can get them in 12 ounce mugs, and I really like both sizes. I think they're just a really nice product. So whenever they go on sale, I like to, to get a few. Um, the other thing about the 15 ounce mugs is that they come with their own interior box that you can use to gift wrap. So inside of this box, you'll see that you have the mug and it's wrapped and, and everything. So um, this is just a nice, you can put it back in here when you're done getting your mug designed and then you can gift wrap it for your recipient. So we'll be using the 15 ounce mug today instead of the 12 ounce. And the infusible ink transfer sheet, which I'll talk about this in just a moment because this particular day, I'm gonna be doing something different that I haven't done before. But the other tools that you would need for a project like this is a cutting mat. I'm gonna be using my Joy today just because of the size. I do have some parchment paper, um, scissors, I have a weeding tool and tweezers, and these are only needed. Um, sometimes you need these in the event that you have little pieces in your design that need to be weeded out, okay? And then I've got some heat resistant tape and a brayer, and I always have out my measuring tape to use in case I need to make sure things are even, etc. The infusible ink transfer sheets, you know, they come quite long. These, they come in these rolls that are 12 inches wide and they come in these bags. You do want to make sure your hands are clean, dry, and free of any lotion, perfume, etc. But when you use the infusible ink transfer sheets, you inevitably have amounts left over just like any other um, adhesive or iron-on vinyl that you might use for your projects. So I have quite a few little pieces left over and let me just explain why I have. So sometimes depending on the substrate, like a, a bag or, or usually actually with bags, I am always worried that maybe there's not enough polyester content to take the sublimation ink. So I do hold on to these smaller pieces of the infusible ink transfer sheets and I use them to do test swatches. And um, this is definitely not something that you particularly have to do, but I have found it very helpful many times to do a little test patch very on an inconspicuous place, like on the inside or on the bottom of the bag. And um, so these little pieces here, I can just cut off a little square and try it out and make sure that it is going to work for the item that I want to fuse it on. With all of that said, I'm gonna move these to the side. I do have a considerable amount of transfer sheet material. However, I do not have a full sheet. And actually that is okay for the particular design that I'm doing today. So let me take you over to Design Space and show you the design that I am making. And then we are going to get the mug put together. 
Here in Design Space, I have actually already pulled up the design guide for a mug that is 15 ounce. Let me show you where I got that from. Uh, you could go to projects and I like to click on Cricut only because I know that this is put out by Cricut. And then I would just search mug design setup. I actually tend to use that quite a bit. When you do that, you're going to get a variety of pre-made designs and then some templates. So these particular ones here on the first two rows, those are templates that you are able to use to design your own mugs. So today I am using this design your own mug here. So it doesn't have any of these pre-fabricated uh, um, backgrounds or anything like that. So I just chose that particular item. And then when you bring it in to design space, you'll get this image here. Now let me explain what all we have. We have a guide. This particular guide right here does nothing more than help you figure out where like the center of your mug would be and then the center of each side of your mug. So this is, would be for a right hand handle, and this would be for a left hand handle, depending on which way you want to orientate your design. Um, so that actually gets hidden like this in your layers panel before you go to cutting. And then the white portion here, this is what would be cut out of your infusible ink. Now, I particularly do not have a size of um, infusible ink that is large enough. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to put my design on both the left and right side of the mug, and then I am going to use parchment paper as the part of the wrap, but the design pieces will be here just kind of independently of each other. And then we'll get them on the mug and pressed and everything will be great. So let me, let's see, I'm going to select both of those I'm going to align horizontally. There we go. And I'm actually going to attach those two things so that they don't keep moving around from each other. And then again, when we go to cut this out, I will be hiding the, the pink guides. And I may go ahead and hide the white mug design setup because to be honest, I really won't need that to be cut out. Um, okay, so the next thing that I have done is I have brought in, I'm going to go to upload, I have brought in my own design. Now this particular design right here is a Carpenter Woodworking Saw Heartbeat and I got this off of Creative Fabrica and I just went to upload image and I browsed my computer and I found the design and I clicked open and the design is white and on screen you can hardly see that. I, I personally can hardly see it, but I can see a little bit of a shadow and then I clicked continue and now you can see the shadow a little bit more and I'm going to hit apply and continue. And then I have choices. I can do a print and cut flat graphic, which means it's just really, it's flattened. I could just print it and make a sticker. I don't need that. This is if you have a multi-layer design, don't need that. I'm just gonna go with the single layer and I'm going to hit continue. And then I will just hit upload. And it's going to bring this in and it's quite large. You can see I get a warning. So I'm going to come up here to the sizing and I'm going to click on that. And I'm just going to size it at, you know, 3.5. I, I may change the size momentarily. 
So now what I have is I have this design here. And I'm going to actually put one on both sides of the mug. So before I do that, I want to go down here to contour. Um, it's a little hard to see. I'm going to blow this up a little bit. In the design, there are some really tiny slivers that would be cut out uh, here on the blades. And then there's a couple down here. And I really don't want to have to deal with these couple that are way down here. I'm going to go ahead and attempt to allow these little slivers to be out of the blades. And if I have a hard time pulling them off of the infusible ink, I'm not going to worry about it. But if I go down to contour, I can see all of the elements of the design. I'm going to scroll all the way down and these super tiny little pieces that I would probably never be able to weed out. I'm going to hide those and go back to my design. And then I'm going to go ahead and resize that. I'm going to change it to three and I'm going to see how that looks. I think that I can probably go a little bit more. So three and a third. All right, I'm going to put that there. So I think that that's actually pretty good. I'm going to come over here to my layers panel and click on the duplicate button. I could also right click on the image and go to duplicate. So now I have two of them. So one for each side of the mug. And then I'm going to select both of them. And the reason why is I want to go to a line, a line bottom, and then I want to attach them. I want to make sure that they are even all the way across the mug and that they, um, they're pretty evenly spaced. I, I want them to be respectively even with each other, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and hit attach. And that means that these two pieces, if I move them, they move together. The next thing, and I really don't need to do this, but if I was cutting this out of a large sheet of infusible ink, then I could click on the white mug design wrap here, and I could go to a line and center, and it would pull my design centered vertically and horizontally. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave that that way. And the so the next thing I want to check is I want to see, I'm going to hide that. I don't think I want to cut this particular white wrap. I can just use the carrier sheet that the infusible ink is on. It doesn't need to be that large. And I think that I can just place those on the mug themselves. So as long as I leave them together as one unit, they'll be even. So I actually am going to go ahead and hide that particular element as well. And I'm going to go to my make screen and see what everything looks like. Okay, so this is what the design looks like. You can see both things are together. And quite frankly, I think that that will be fine because I can just wrap this. And once I weed it, I can wrap this entire little piece. It'll be on really sticky transfer tape and I can just wrap it around the mug. All right. So the next thing that we want to do is we're going to mirror. Now I'm mirror mirroring out of habit. When you use infusible ink, you always want to mirror the design just like you would with iron-on vinyl. And then it's on my mat here. I'm having to use the four and a half by 12 because the design is long. I'll click continue. Now that I'm connected to the joy, I'm going to go ahead and click on infusible ink transfer sheet. Notice that mine is bookmarked. If you don't have this bookmarked, you can always go to browse all materials and then you can type infusible ink into the search box or just scroll down through the, your options. So we'll click on that 
and I'm going to go ahead and do default pressure and just let that be. The fine point blade is loaded in the joy and I'm going to go ahead and load the material onto my mat and then we'll click and go according to the prompts on the screen. Okay, so I have my cutting mat here and I have my what I would consider scrap pieces of infusible ink sheets. I do have one. I can just be done and put this whole thing here on my mat and let it go, um, which would probably be the easiest. And then I would weed out this particular middle portion and I would have this carrier sheet would be sticky and it would allow me to go around the mug as one cohesive piece. And I'm probably going to do that. If you wanted to, you could take a piece like this. You could cut it in half horizontally right here and then have one piece here and one piece here. The issue with doing it that way would be that you are not guaranteed that they would be lined up um, vertically, that they wouldn't be on the same vertical row, so to speak, when you placed it on your mug. And then again, this is this is definitely not enough to go around the mug. So I'm just going to set all of this aside and use this piece here. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this on the mat. And for the sake of ease, I'm just going to go ahead and put the whole thing on there instead of cutting it. And then you do want to use your brayer and really go over that particular piece that you put down. Make sure it is well adhered to your mat. Now this does look brown, but when we uh, press it to the mug, it will turn a very deep, vibrant black color and it will look like this. So I've made quite a few of these and it just is a really nice glossy black that's just gorgeous. The next thing we're gonna do is we're just going to stick this into our joy. So the joy is flashing, I'm gonna stick that in. It's gonna measure and then it'll prompt me to hit the go button it will cut everything out and then it will prompt me to unload. Okay, so everything is cut out and you can see that I've got my design here and it is, it is quite intricate. And so more than likely, I will not be able to get those tiny little slivers out of the blade, which is totally fine. I am absolutely not worried about that. I don't even think it will be noticeable. So I'm going to pull away my mat from the infusible ink sheet. And then I am actually going to, going to cut here. And then I'm gonna go down this way. This will allow me to make sure that these two stay this far apart and that I will be able to get them as straight as possible. So when I wrap them around the mug, they're, you know, they're on the same line horizontally, and then they'll have this distance between them. Okay, so when we're reading the infusible ink, um, I'm just going to just kind of roll this and you can hear some cracking which is you know that's what you want to hear and if you don't hear a lot of cracking it means it's it's really did a pretty good job cutting it to begin with and so now I'm just gonna get a corner started and get that pulled off of my transfer sheet actually I'll just go here this will be easy. Okay, so now I'm just going to get this weeded out so that we can get this put on our mug. As you 
can see, that was a pretty easy weed. I was not real sure how that was going to work, but you can see that I have my design. Okay, actually, let me, there we go. I can, I have my design and you can see all the little intricate parts and yeah, this looks really good. Um, sometimes when I do these, I also turn them over and I look at it like that because then you can really see the backside and it just helps you. This is what it'll look like on the mug itself. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna get the mug ready for pressing. So question of the day, what is, um, what is your favorite? Well, okay, not what is your favorite. What are you gifting your father or husband or both this year for Father's Day? Um, if in fact you are doing anything. Um, I am doing this mug for my dad and I have a shadow box that I am putting together. It'll be layered cardstock that I cut out with my Cricut and it will be a bloodhound because he has a bloodhound dog that is super sweet. She's just, she is really a hot mess. And then my husband is also getting a mug and then I made a, um, a like a koozie and I used infusible ink markers to put that design on the koozie. That was a very new technique for me as well. Okay, when you take your mug out of the packaging, I find it easiest just to stick my hand in the mug and you do wanna get a lint roller and you just wanna go along your mug surface and make sure that there's no lint, dust, etc. even though it just came out of the packaging. So my mug is here, it is ready. And until I get the design onto the mug, I'm only gonna handle it from right here. So this is the mug design that I'm going to, and what I thought is I would literally just wrap it around like this, All right? So if this was a full wrap, I would do the same thing, I would just, grab this right here. And I also need to figure out how high I want it to go. I don't want it too high and I don't want it too low. I'm gonna do it this way. I am going to work on making sure that whatever this first one is, that the rest are the same. Okay, so from the bottom of that tip to here. All right, so that's one and 15 sixteenths. So the next one needs to be one and 15 sixteenths. And that way it looks even. I would hate for it to not be even. And I'll just work a little bit at a time. This side is good. Everything is actually super even with the bottom of the mug. And what I did is I measured the bottom of these little heartbeat sections to the bottom of the mug here, and they are all the same distance. So even if my eye is playing tricks on me. So now I'm gonna just rub this down really well to get a good tight seal. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I tend to have visions in my head and then I decide, oh, this would be great. And then it is, while it is still quote beginner friendly in some regards, I tend to then, you know, be a little extra and have to change things. Normally I just use one big ginormous sheet of the infusible ink and it cuts out the whole wrap and everything and I I've actually never pieced it like this where you just do the one little bitty design so I haven't ever done that but I love to try new things so every time I craft I try and do something new 
And usually, I think a lot about it, and I think through the process, and I think of things like, well, what if this happens, and what about that? And nine times out of 10, things work out quite well. So what I'm doing now is I'm just putting some heat transfer tape here on the ends. I just wanna make sure that they stay down. Um, this is very well adhered. There's no gaps or anything. This is going it should do a really good press. And what I'm going to do is take some butcher paper, just off to err on the side of caution. I'm going to take some butcher paper, a couple of layers, and I'm just gonna wrap it around my mug like this. When I put it in my press, I don't need it to be this long, so I'll cut it down. But that way, um, I know that in the event that any ink seeps out, um, and I would have to restart this project, that it won't ruin my machine. I've never actually had that happen. So, okay, let me turn on my machine while I finish getting this ready. And I'm really just doing this more as a precaution. And if you do try to just do a small design like this without the larger piece and you wrap your mug, please use butcher paper and not parchment paper. There is a difference and the butcher paper is what is needed. I ordered like a ginormous roll on Amazon and it was it was really 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 inexpensive okay so this is ready to go just like this I'm gonna wait for the machine to finish heating up this I'm gonna save for the gift box I'll just put that in there for now okay the mug press is heated and ready to go so what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be placing the mug in this reservoir right here. And we're gonna be very careful to keep our hands away from all of this green mint area because that is the heating element and it is extremely hot. I can feel the heat. Um, couldn't quite toast marshmallows, but it would definitely um, not be pretty for our skin. I have a um, smaller, heat press mat here and I tend to put my press my mug press on top of the mat and so that when I take the mug out I can just set it here and let it cool and it takes about 15 or so minutes to cool down so what we're going to do is we're going to stick this here in and I want to this little paper, there we go, the paper is getting stuck. All right, and then um, I'm going to kind of move my handle just this way a little bit. This green door will move this way. So I just wanna make sure my design is covered. Then I will press the handle down. And you heard the beep, it's gonna start. This is going to press immediately and it's going to keep on going when it gets to this particular light and it's finished it'll beep again to let us know it is done then we can take the mug out and put it here on the mat to cool okay so this is done it is beeping at us we are going to lift up the handle and then this handle here is cool to touch and again i just want to not touch any of the blue part and i'm going to lift the mug out Okay, and I'm just going to place that here on the pressing mat. And I'm going to let this cool for about a good 15, 20 minutes. I find that the more, um, the more I let it just sit and uh, cool down and wait till it is completely cool, I just seem to have really good luck with the transfer. All right, so this mug is now completely cool. I really gave it a nice long time to cool down and I just find that that tends to work well for me. Um, I let it cool completely and then I know for a fact that the 
that the infusible ink has had a time to really do what it needed to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and reveal on camera. This is always the most nerve wracking part. Okay, here we go. This is the moment of truth. Oh my goodness. Look at that. This is great. Y'all look at that. That looks so good. And see, look, I have like a little tiny freckle. I call it a freckle, but I have this tiny little freckle. So that must have been like a microscopic piece of infusible ink. But, you know, hopefully my dad will not notice. And here is the other side. And I got all the pieces off. I think I have another tiny freckle there, but I'm super excited. This was a vision that I had. Um, I actually had a hard time sleeping because I just kept thinking about the project and whether or not it would work. So this looks fantastic. Y'all, I'm so excited. All right, so my dad, well, if you hadn't guessed by now, my dad is a cardiologist. And so he is really into, um, well, he's into woodworking. That's his new hobby. I, I tell him it's his second career, but I think he's really gonna love this mug. We were talking about um, the infusible ink mugs and I was telling him the science behind it and he just thought it was the coolest thing ever. So, this is really great. I'm super excited. I already have his card ready to go. Let me show you this card really fast. I did not make a tutorial for this one, but I will show it to you. This was done partly on my Cricut. Um, I have several layers of the dad, two, well, two or three layers of the dad in white and two in blue that have been glued on top of each other and put on to this embossed panel i have an embossing folder with tools there we go you can see that i thought that was great and then that is sitting on top of the blue so this is a card for dad and later today and i probably won't be putting this on camera yet either but i have a layered shadow box that i'm going to be putting together for him as well and I am just, y'all, I am just tickled pink, which is great because it's Wednesday. And on Wednesday, we wear pink. Anyway, thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope that you were um, informed and inspired to try something like this for yourself, um, where you can just use your scraps for infusible ink and still create a wonderful mug for a recipient in your life that you want to gift with something that is super cool. Um, go ahead and like, subscribe, and share to the channel. I'd love to have you continue to join us as we put out some more content throughout the summer and beyond. Make sure the men in your life get wished Happy Father's Day on Sunday. And until I see you in the next video, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.